Good morning. Let's I'd like to welcome you to Sacred Heart Parish. Today's liturgy of the second Sunday in Advent. And we also welcome those on our live streaming through our website. A reminder again as a courtesy to please silence your electronic devices so you won't disturb our liturgy. Sacred Heart Parish will join in the Vatican tradition of blessing the people and their figurines of baby Jesus. We invite children and adults to bring their baby Jesus figures from the crib next Sunday uh, to the Mass next weekend, December 16th to 17th. Outside, the small church communities are hosting a bake sale after Mass. All proceeds will benefit two charities. We thank those who have brought donations and for those who will purchase. Our parish family life, young adult group, are on the patio today collecting college student information for those interested in participating in the care package program. They'll be accepting volunteers to assist as well. This afternoon at 4 p.m., we will have several priests here for our Advent penance service. That's 4 p.m. today. And after the penance service, we will have a caroling service and invite you to please join in for both events. A Christmas story in music titled, entitled Law, Laud to Nativity or Lauda per la Natività del Signore will be performed by the Advent Choral Service on Sunday, December 17th in the evening at 7 p.m. here in the church by the Vocal Ensemble Musica Vitale, Soloist and Orchestra under the baton of Elena Vizue. And finally, this weekend, the collection is for the Retirement Fund for Religious, and this helps the elderly Catholic sisters, brothers, religious order, priests. Please use the special envelope found in your pew or in the back of the church and give something to help those who have given a lifetime. Envelopes may be returned in the regular collection. And this weekend's bulletin, as always, contains information on the Advent activities. Please take home a copy so you will not miss any of them.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. You're all most welcome here this beautiful Sunday morning, the second Sunday of Advent for the celebration of the Eucharist. Special welcome to visitors who might be with us, and also those following the celebration and live streaming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That's the message. Prepare our minds and our hearts, our spirits, make more room for the Lord in our lives. We ask him to be with us in a special way. In this Mass, as we celebrate the Paschal Mystery, his dying and rising for us and for all people. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The children who are going out for the liturgy of the word, if you'd please come forward. The liturgy of the word for children. Very good. Okay. There must be t twice as many. Little kids, little children, that's great. Come along, come along, come along. Very good. We're preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. At Christmas, at the time of death, he comes to us, and at the end of the world in a special way. Lisette, receive the word of God and proclaim it diligently to the children. And children, listen very attentively to the good news of salvation. Sing the praise of the Lord and pray for everybody and then come back to us for the second part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Eucharist. Go in the peace of Christ. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. 
a voice cries out. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wastelands a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings, and cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, 
but he is patient with you, not wishing that anyone would perish, but that all would come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found out without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story told about a little boy 
who went to his mother a couple of weeks before Christmas and said, this is many moons ago. And uh, he said, Mom, do you think I could get a bicycle for Christmas this year? He just learned to cycle his friend's bicycle. And Mom says, I'm not sure. Your dad is very busy. We have a lot of bills to pay. But pray every night before you go to bed. Pray to Jesus. It's his birthday we're celebrating. And a couple of weeks later, he came and said, Mom, do you think I'll get a bicycle for Christmas this year? She said, I'm not sure. And she gave him the same scenario. And then she said, please, have you been praying? He said, every night I pray. And she said, keep on praying. Never underestimate the power of prayer. So they were getting closer to Christmas, so he went back to his room, knelt down near his bedside, and started praying with all his might. And then he saw a little statue of Mary over here on the little table close to his bedside. So he got the statue, brought it over, put it in the bed, went into the bathroom, brought out a towel, and folded the towel around the statue and put it as far as he could under the bed. And then he said, Jesus, please, please get me a bicycle for Christmas if you ever want to see your mother again. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say in my homily. <laughs> oh boy. A verse from the Advent prophet Isaiah, two great prophets, Isaiah and John the Baptist. So, a verse from Isaiah the prophet introduces us to the mission of John the Baptist. You find the words in the first reading about prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And then John uses that same verse, prepare the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord was for the Israelites, God was always with them, no matter what happened. He was always there. The way of the Lord was their passage from bondage in Egypt into the Promised Land. And then they're coming back from exile in Babylon, back to their homeland. These are very special events in the Old Testament among the Israelites. And it was God's way, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. And John, of course, was out in the desert and he preached a baptism of repentance. Key word is repentance, penance. What does penance mean? There's a Greek word metanoia. Meta means beyond. Noia or nois means mind, beyond our present mindset, beyond our present mindset. It's kind of a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of attitude, and maybe a change of lifestyle. Penance, penance, penance. And that's what people are called to during Advent, to look into our lives. And John gives us a clue. People were going out in droves to the desert, in droves, because the message was that life can be better than what we have right now. Life can be much better, much better, much better. And the people were rejoicing, and they were being baptized by John in the River Jordan. And are out in the desert, out in the desert. And uh, it meant so much to them. 
It meant so much to them, this baptism, and a better, a better way of living for the total kind of a conversion where they were. And uh, John, of course, was, uh, his message was prepare the way of the Lord. He was a precursor of Christ. He was kind of the GPS for Jesus, showing people the way, showing people the way. So if they got off the track, uh, recalculate, get back on again. And uh, it was a great message, a great message. So we're all called to prepare the way of the Lord during this Christmas, during this Advent season. Prepare the way of the Lord. And that's why we have a penance service this afternoon at 4 p.m. A penance service at 4 p.m. Let me tell you this little story first. On a Saturday morning out in La Mesa, St. Martin's Church, it was a beautiful morning. I was working in a homily in the office. I was assigned to that parish at that time. And a young man came in. And the door was open. And uh, he saw me in the office. And he walked over to the door. He said, could I talk to your father? I said, sure. He said, you know what? I walked into the church this morning. My life is kind of mixed up. And I looked up at Jesus over the altar. And I said to myself, Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my sins. I need to get back on track. I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm not happy in my lifestyle right now. I'm not happy in my lifestyle. I need to turn around. So anyhow, he told his story and I listened. And uh, <clears throat> then he said, could I go to confession? And uh, I said, sure. I gave him a little guideline for uh, examination, examining his conscience. <clears throat> and uh, he made his confession and received absolution. I encouraged him to continue to go to Mass every weekend, to say his prayers, be in good relationship with his family and God, etc., etc., etc. So I asked him in the end, how come you, ca you came here to the see <laughs> me this morning? And he said, the door was open. The door was open. Very important to leave the door open. <laughs> Not at night. <laughs> So he came in, and he was very happy leaving, very happy. And I think it's good for people to hear an examination of conscience, because sometimes <coughs> we think a little bit before confession, we go in and confess whatever <coughs> comes up. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyhow, he, I, uh, lost, lost my thought there. He um, was very happy leaving. And uh, when we go to reconciliation, we need to have somebody to, somebody, it's good to have a standard against which to measure your life. It's good to have a standard. And you know what the standard is? Jesus. Jesus is the standard. How is my life in comparison to the life of Jesus? That's a very important thing. And focus more on God when you're going to confession than on yourself. More on God. <coughs> Jesus provides the standard for us Christians. So before celebrating the sacrament, spend some time thinking about Jesus, the kind of person he was the attitudes and values he had, the way he treated others, 
Think of what Jesus had to say to us today in, and to our world. So, examination of conscience. My religious practice, do I give time to God in prayer every day? Do I pray regularly? Do I join my parish community for Mass every weekend? My home life, what am I like to live with? Do I make my home happy? Do I honor my marriage vows? Are my duties toward my parents or children? Those whom I love? Am I selfish or moody? Do I cause serious problems in my home through abusing alcohol or drugs? Being violent or bullying? Being lazy or selfish? Do I waste time looking at TV? Or the internet? Or watching pornography? which is very destructive to relationships and very serious. My relationship with others, am I tolerant of others? Do I treat others with respect? Am I bitter towards anyone? Do I hold a grudge against another? Do I forgive those who hurt me? Do I look down on any group or individual because of class, race, nationality, politics, sex, or religion. My practice of justice. Am I too fond of material things? Do I respond to the needs and rights and do I respect the needs and rights and property of others? Am I honest in my work and business relationships? Do I pay my debts and return borrowed goods? Do I cheat, steal, or make false claims? Do I respect the environment and of all of God's creation? And then there's a little bit about sins of omission. Sins of omission. It's good to think of these different things. So people have a great opportunity. <clears throat> if you have the time, if you can block it out of your schedule and come over to church. Maybe you've been to confession recently. I would say, come again. You, know, you may not need to go to confession, but pray for your family. There may be some members away from the church. Great time. God hears prayers, and God answers prayers. I believe that 100%. So if you have the time, <laughs> come this afternoon at 4 p.m., and um, you'll find it will be a great grace. If you need the sacrament, it's great grace for you. Very important. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Let us all profess our faith now together by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The coming of our Redeemer was foretold by the prophets by preaching repentance from sins. John the Baptist heralded his appearance. In the spirit of penance, let us seek God's help through our prayers. For the church, baptized in the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations who are strong, wise, and committed to the ways that lead to peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who find life hard, for our military deployed far from home, for those caught in the path of the fires, and for all who provide God's comfort to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the comfort and healing of persons who are ill or suffering, especially Stan Progovics, Jean Baisley, and for those who care for them with patience and devotion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal happiness and the comforting arms of the Father for all who have died, especially Mary Donlan, the, for the father of Mike Y. Woody, and for John and Mary Hussey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts to the Lord who shepherds us tenderly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, look upon the needs of your people and grant our petitions as we prepare a way for your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. While the gifts on the altar are being prepared, let us sing number 399, Awake to the Day. That's 399.
My sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the perfection of your mercy, the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on, possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and cause sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us and through and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, during this season of Advent, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we, too, are your sons and daughters. Indeed, too, though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over, himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood, so he shed, to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race, Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit they may partake of this one bread and one chalice. They may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, John his Auxiliary, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wounds of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
trespass against us. Then lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The power and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <coughs> Let us share with one another the peace of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us sing number 396, Comfort My People. That's 396. Our second hymn is number 400, Prepare the Way of the Lord. That's 400.
replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through all partaking in this mystery, we may te you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Immediately after Mass, there is a big sale in the parish uh, hall or out in the patio, and uh, the uh, money that comes from that goes to charities. Great opportunity to do some uh, uh, Christmas shopping as you leave after Mass. And the uh, choir, do you want to make an announcement about Six p.m. Christmas carols here in the church, and our penance service at four p.m. We will have a number of priests available for confessions. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Be May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Someone dropped a little white porcelain pin as they came to communion. It's right up here on the uh, ambo. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks. Let us end this celebration by singing number 409, People Look East. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. That's 409.